Hey everyone, it's Chris here. Hope you're having a good day. Um, so today's video, I'm going to talk about rough ends of the tiny house. So when you get your framing done, you're gonna have to start your rough ends. Well, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Some people actually rough in from the exterior, which we've never been a big fan of. So just like building a new construction home, a single family, we do all of our rough ins from the inside and then we can insulate, whether that be with fiberglass insulation or blowing insulation, whatever the client um, you know, decides upon when they sign their contract or which way they wanna go. And you know, I'm gonna do probably a separate video on insulation, but just to touch into that a little bit, we use fiberglass insulation about 90% of the time. Unless it's going to a very cold climate, then we'll do spray-in insulation. And there's a couple reasons behind that. Uh, one being the trapping of moisture. In such a tight, small area, you will trap a lot of moisture into the home, which will allow mold to grow, things like that. And there's a fresh air um, concern, where if it's so tight, you're not getting enough fresh air coming into the house, it can become a health issue. So then we have to add some sort of fresh air intake some way that fresh air can get inside the house with the blown in insulation. With the fiberglass, there's still areas that can allow fresh air to get in. So we prefer to do that unless it's going to extreme cold weather. But this is just your typical um, rough in that you would see right here. So this is for an AC rough in. Um, now, if we do DC, you would see different wiring there. And with the DC, you're talking about like a solar build. Um, but with the AC wiring, uh, it's pretty much standard just like a house. You can either have a 30 amp home or a 50 amp home, depending on how much power uh, is required to run it. So there's a couple different options there. We're gonna actually got, get into that uh, a little further along when people are trying to decide whether they wanna do 30 amp, 50 amp, what are their power needs, what do they need to know, can they go off the grid? It's gonna be a video that's really gonna talk about power because solar is very, um, it's tricky, and I'm not gonna lie about that. It, it's an interesting thing, it's an awesome thing when you wanna be completely off the grid and um, you, you do not wanna be uh, worried about you know, having to have a power connection or a water connection, um, but there are things that you need to think about, like how much power you need um, you know, to, to live, and will the solar system provide that much power? Um, and some people find out that it does not provide enough power and some are fine because they've accepted the fact that they're gonna to have to cut way down on their power usage. Uh, they may not be taking as long of a shower because even though you might have water available, you still have to have a pump run and that pump can pull on the solar system. And then of course the, the uh, question is what happens when it's cloudy for three, four or five days? What if there's snow on the panels? So it's extra maintenance. So there's a lot of things to think about when you're either deciding on solar, which is off the grid, or you're deciding to be completely on the grid. Uh, but today's video is showing you AC, which would be on the grid. This is going to be a 50 amp build, um, and this is a 28 foot uh, tiny home that we're constructing right here. We're in the framing stage, the rough in stage. So as you can see, we've got plumbing run, we've got uh, electric run, and then the next step is going to be to insulate, and then we're going to be putting in our wall boards. So that's kind of the the uh, you know the operation where it goes in each sequence. And as, as, as you're going along, you wanna make sure that you're covering everything before you get into the wallboard stage. Um, I've seen some tiny homes that have been built that are afterthoughts where they've actually had to box out and run some plumbing lines. Or I've even seen tiny homes that were built where the plumbing is not in the walls, which to me is crazy. That just takes up so much room. Uh, you know, you're limited with space anyway. So you wanna make sure your plumbing and your electrical are all in the walls, they're insulated well, and they're, it's completely uh, you know, giving you the most space you could possibly have in these homes. Because typically, um, you know, on an eight and a half foot wide trailer, the interior space is gonna be seven and a half feet wide. So that's really what you gotta work with and every inch counts, as you guys know, in tiny homes. So hopefully you got some good information from this video. We got a lot more videos coming. Please subscribe, share with a friend that might be interested in tiny homes, maybe building their own home or having someone build it. But I appreciate you guys uh, viewing today and I look forward to the next video. Have a great day.